is Ruel's Running Podcast, a podcast about running, health, family, play, and an NSNG lifestyle. And now, here's your host, Ruel. Excuse me as I rock on. That's Went Away by Dorothy Lane. Dorothy Lane out of Martinez, California. That's out of the Cut and Dry album. Check them out at DorothyLaneMusic.com. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Ruel's Running Podcast. I am your host, Ruel Femme Ruel Abadam. And my co-host is... Um, Ruff Roo. Ruff Roo, how are you doing? Well, I'm fine, Fem Roo. Good to be here. <laughs> What's going on, Fem Roo? Well, at the date of this recording, a lot of shit's going down in California. Things are burning up north around here, and things are burning down south, down there. It's all going to hell. Jeez Louise, this is, has become an awful tradition. No shit, Femru, and it sucks balls. Hairy, musty, stinky balls. I must say, a lot of people have lost a lot of houses and stuff, and that sucks majorly major. Um, yeah. Rough rude, that's an interesting way to put it, and I agree. (laughs) Anyway, I presume that things are going well at your end of the neck of the woods, rough rude. So far, so good. Cross my fingers and my hairy toes. There was a close call in the neighborhood. You know, I subscribe or I downloaded this app called Pulse Point or something along that nature, and I'm able to follow the the fire departments nearby as far as what's getting reported. And uh, I got home from work. I got an alert on the Ring app. Then I, f- I confirmed the same report that, yep, there was a... There was a structural fire in one of the homes, not too far from a friend of the family's, as a matter of fact, so a little concerning, so I took it upon myself to drive through just to see what might be going on, and the police department had blocked off that that entrance to the street, so I figured they've got it covered, and I didn't see a ton of smoke kind of pluming in the air. I actually couldn't tell between just the general pollution that's been going on because of the northern the fires that are happening up all over the place north, north of us. So I figured, hmm, can't be, can't be anything to, to uh, my voice has just changed. Oh my lord. <laughs> can't be anything to be to, to, to worry about. Figure the pros got it covered and they, they did. About an hour or two later, I drove by with the family because there's nothing like taking your fire into, taking your family into the fire just for entertainment value. Anywho, um, we drove by. The, the fire department was still there and he had some like teenagers and stuff sitting on the curb across the street and uh, the window from the top floor above the garage had a, had a busted window. So yeah, it looked like the fire department did some pretty good uh, work to the house but from what I could tell from what we could tell it was pretty much a done deal Um, no telling what the damage was but as far as the danger uh, for the neighboring houses in the neighborhood it it looked like it was pretty much contained dealt with or whatever so sucks but could have been worse there's a whole lot of worse going on around here. <sighs> I'm glad that it isn't worse than it was. Because it would suck balls to have to relocate the whole neighborhood. And I would not know where to go. 
we could live with Vinny, but he's on the go, and we that'd be tough catching up with him. We might have to live with Lonnie. Lonnie Beauchamp. Maybe, maybe, just maybe. <laughs> this is dumb. <laughs> If I offended anybody, I apologize. That it was not my intent to offend anybody, but you know, who knows? These days, anybody's offended. Everybody's offended. Jesus, Louise. I, I just offended Jesus and Louise just by making that comment. <clears throat> so, in all seriousness, <clears throat> everybody's at risk here in the Bay Area. You know, if you if, if you already haven't lost your home, you know you're. You're on the watch about of of flare-ups and fires jumping and stuff, and just just like just that example mentioned earlier. I mean, the last thing that I thought was that fire would be close to home in the neighborhood, but it doesn't have to be. It does not have to be, you know, these major blazes that are destroying neighborhoods that that hit our home it could be just sort of the uh unrelated uh flare-up fire whatever right it sucks you know everyone's on alert you know i'm downloading apps that give me the ability to sort of tap into you know a bunch of emergency reports you know whether it's whether it's a, uh, a structural fire or someone needs a you know a uh, resuscitation or things of that nature um, you know also there's Twitter you know following the uh, the local fire department and police department uh, you know we've what's what's going on in California you know if you're in California and you happen to be listening to this shitty podcast as you know the uh, utility company the the power company pg and e they, they, they are having to schedule power outages uh, in a whole bunch of areas. Just, we just recently went through a second phase of scheduled power out, outages in, in, in our area. And so far, both times, we haven't been impacted. We're on the edge. So I think what happens is where there are areas that are at risk of um, the most concerning areas of of a fire they're gonna schedule shutting down electricity in those spots and if you just so happen to be on the part of the grid that 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 uh that section of concerned area area of concern is then you're gonna be affected as a result so tons of that happening you know and even if you're not in danger of fire you're in danger of bad air quality and it doesn't really smell and look too bad from my perspective at this point in time, but this afternoon, my eyes were bugging. They were irritated, and that's that bad air. If it ain't making me breathe funny, coughing, or whatever, my eyes are picking up all of that partic- particles and stuff. Not all of it, just, just my share. My eyeball, each eyeball is getting its share of pollution. That's all. Man, sucks balls. Um, you know, and uh, what else is going on? I'm feeling great, regardless. I mean, you know, I've been in just in hectic mode uh, these past several weeks. There was there was that weekend over at Disneyland. The following weekend, there was birthday parties. And that rep wrapped up with a dead refrigerator needing to be replaced. And that wrapped up with another weekend of birthday parties and and uh, and um, driving around and you know amidst you know blazing stuff happening you know in not too far not too far in the distance you know. So now we're at a point where um, it's it's just weird. Like the other day we were at a birthday party in San Francisco and. It was a bit troubling because I had to tune in to the radio news, and I ordinarily don't do that. 
and just to hear the, the traffic reports and the weather reports and the fire reports and all that stuff that's all connected to damage and loss and and fire and power outages all that stuff is like it just quickly kind of took its toll I was kind of exhausted you know but at the same time you're at this birthday party and at, we're at a bowling alley and kids are having a good time and people are eating cake and people are drinking beer and you know eating food and it's sort of like everyone's just kind of living this normal life with but there's a chunk of the population up in these parts that are just losing everything and having to evacuate and and it's just horrible you know and i you know i i feel so bad for people you know and it, it's you know and if i follow enough information i'm gonna feel worse and you know there's like this weird balance that i have to strike between just being tuned into what's going on but not feeling super depressed about it you know just pray that everybody's gonna be safe and everyone's gonna get by you know it's just a year ago when stuff went down in another part up, up north where people lost homes and stuff it's just ugh, I can't stand it all right i'm gonna go uh, get dinner ready bye do you need a website if you're an individual a consultant a group or small business and need a site or maybe you have an existing site i can help how about graphic design do you need, need a design for a t-shirt, logo, product, business cards? You know, maybe you need help with designing and developing a brand. I'm not an expert, but I do have the tools and the techniques to get the job done. How about a podcast? Yep, like this thing. This thing's a silly little show. Um, do you Are you looking to set up a podcast of your own? Are you looking to reach an audience? Uh, promote your business via podcast? Well, Abadam Studios. That's right, Abadam Studios. Yeah, so that's Abadam Studios. Abadamstudios.com, A-B-A-D-A-M-S-T-U-D-I-O-S.com. Check it out. I'm back. Oh, God. You know, there are moments when there's just so much to do, too much to do, and you really can't plan really can't stay organized you just sort of at least for me at the moment what makes the most sense what has the, the greatest priority at any given time as far as what to do next and uh yeah and i i just try to like focus and do that task and then once that's done think about what the next item on that list of things to do have the next priority you know and it cha- it depends too on you know what you can what you can stand to put off uh, uh, and what you can it's just it's a one it's one big balancing act as far as um work and family and shit you gotta do around the house project this project that good gracious you know and uh you know, and it makes me—it makes me look forward to that cup of coffee at the beginning of the day, and it makes me look forward to, you know, a glass of whiskey at the end of the night, or it makes me look look forward to even drinking a beer during a barbecue. But right now, a barbecue just isn't a good idea, unless I have a lot of meat that I that I'm unable to keep frozen. Then it has to happen. But given all of the fires that are going around. Um, I just, I just feel like, eh, let's just not play with fire right now, unless we really have to. You know, um, the fire that was in the neighborhood the other day, uh, I mean, it wasn't like a big blazing out of control fire, but it was, there was a report of a house with a structure, or, you know, structural fire, a residential home, just a couple houses next to a fr- uh, friends of ours in the neighborhood, and, uh, I messaged our friend to find out basically what was going on and I, I basically said you know I read that there was a fire on the street nearby and it looks and it looks like you know it's all taken care of and I'm glad that it wasn't any worse and then from there our friend said that um, yeah they weren't from what she heard you know um, 
one of the uh, the kids in the house was home alone. Uh, I think a junior high kid. And uh, something started the fire on the second floor in one of the bedrooms. And from what she heard, or my friend heard, was that they, would, they ordinarily don't keep anything but a computer in that one room. So, uh, yeah, I drove by it. You can see uh, it's upper floor window is boarded up. You know, boarded up uh, the room ab- above the garage. Anyways, uh, yeah, just I'm f- feeling uh, like there's lots to do. You know, there's lots to do, and then there's just the day to day lots to do that has to happen. You know, for example, you know, I'm trying to meet a deadline to complete a project. For my son, in particular, I am making a mask for him, which, you know, I had heads up on uh, quite some time. It's just, as I mentioned before, back to back to back, you know, from trips to birthday parties to this and that. It just suddenly Halloween is upon us, <laughs> you know. Holy cow! So I, I, uh, I have to make his mask, and his mask is it's kind of cool. It's unusual. But it's nothing that you can find in a store and buy that's any good, if, if anything. So I have to make it. He wanted to make it himself, but for me to help him make it, I think it's going to take a lot more effort than me just going out and make it. <laughs> Does it make any sense? And it, it involves foam board, cutting it to the appropriate shape, masking it with some painter's tape, and then sketching the artwork over the, the, the painter's tape. And then splicing out sections, you know, stenciling out sections of the the tape, peeling off certain sections and spray painting, you know, the stencil, waiting for things to dry and then peeling it all off to re- to, to reveal, you know, the the finished pretty much finished product. It just takes time to sketch, you know. Um, and being colorblind, as you know, blue painter's tape as a backdrop over behind a, you know, pencil. <laughs> that doesn't do well with my eyes, my colorblind eyes. I, you know, and you know, with pencil, you, and you have, if you have lighting, a lamp nearby, there's, there's, a, there's a subtle, not a subtle, but there's, there is glare off of the, the pencil print, you know, on the paper. Uh, not a tremendous amount, but enough to just throw off what I'm able to see. Um, but I'll get it done. But I gotta get it done. I will get it done. But I just feel like, oh my god, that's that's gonna occupy my time tonight. I'm gonna cram to get that work done. I just need to get it to a point where it's stenciled, colored, and just drying. Then tomorrow or maybe later in the night, just be able to peel off peel it all off and see what it looks like um you know there's like there's that but i've also got to do like hey kids get your homework done hey stop goofing off do your homework hey stop goofing off do your homework you do that one more time you do that again don't do that don't do that don't do that you do that one more time i'm gonna have to spank you kind of stuff you know like you gotta tell the kids over a period of time to not climb on the stair the banister the railing on the stairs you know because they they just feel it's fun i mean not climb like second level but just that bottom portion at the base of this the the base the beginning of the stairs there's that the handle the banister whatever it's kind of got this cool twist and the kids like to just at least my youngest one likes to just hang on it. And then, then she likes to sort of kind of jump and hang and swing off of, around it. I'm like, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, then there's like massive pots and pans and dishes that got to be cleared out. Because who else is going to clear it out? <laughs> you know? My wife and I are going to have to clear it out. Um, that's just part of being a parent, running a household. Um, yeah, so that's that. And at some point, I'm going to feel like, 
now it's time to just have a drink and you know watch little netflix that's when everyone's passed out and i and i hope to have gotten most of my tasks done i mean you know just kind of have to let it fly at that point just what whatever happens happens and but i'm just exhausted you know days like this where i feel like man i just i need to get away and you know interestingly sometimes getting away means getting to the office because there are days where i'm not in the office and there are days that I'm in the office. And getting away to the office is just sometimes just what I need. You know? Um, with that said, you get an understanding that, you know, running running the household is exhausting. So if you're thinking about getting kids and running a family, it's it's work, you know. And if and if it isn't work for you, good for you or shame on you. Good for you because you're awesome. Shame on you because you're probably relying on a bunch of other people to take care of your own family. Don't do that. <laughs> you know, the other day I cooked. Um, I I used the instant pot to cook a, a Filipino dish. It's a pork sinigang. Um, <clears throat> Basically, what it is, it's uh, pork and a bunch of veggies in a soup base. <clears throat> it's a soup base based on a, what the heck is it called? <coughs> oh, what? Tam- oh, tamarind. The tamarind fruit. So it's kind of bitter, sour, um, tart. Tart's a better word. Tart. And uh, it's really easy. And. In the past, when I when I when I started making the the dish for my wife and I, you know, it's one of those things where you miss home cooking and you're so used to having it made for you by your parents or an auntie or uncle or or at some party or at some Filipino restaurant. And uh, you know, when my wife and I before we were married, but we lived together before kids, obviously, you know, we had to learn how to make these these dishes ourselves and uh you can make it with fish as well but we did uh we do pork or fish but most of the time we're doing pork and when i started making it for my wife and i i would put in um pork ribs and uh nowadays not a big fan of the pork ribs still use it more of the cross-cut pork ribs um but we're putting uh, chunks of pork belly instead. And it's that shift of um, enjoying the fats more because of NSNG. And and uh, in the past it would have been like, oh, can't have all the fatty meats, gotta get, get it lean and carve off and skim off all that fat, which is awful. <laughs> So basically, it's like I get these two packages of pork belly and one with, I think you can get it with bone in, cross cut, and stick it in the Instant Pot with about, this is the massive Instant Pot that we have. We have three sizes and this is the biggest of them all. I think it's like an eight quart or something. I don't know. But I can easily put like over 10 cups of water in in the thing. So I put eight or 10 cups of water and I put the, the pork product in it and I pressure cook it for 55 minutes then let it pressurize manually open it up skim off what I've been taught to do it's it's called scum for some reason when you pressure cook pork or boil pork and you get this this funky uh, foamy curled up sort of substance you know I've been taught that it's just to call it scum (laughs) right but I'm and I'm more like you know scum sounds like you shouldn't be eating it at all if if you're eating something that that emits scum don't eat it right it's it's just part of the pork product but you know I do it anyways and it's not a whole lot I just take a fork and I sort of run it along the the edge of the surface of the the water or the, the the broth it's basically broth now pork broth with that unseasoned and then uh, I'll 
I'll uh, leave the lid off and I'll switch the pot to saute so it'll get into a boil state. Then I'll throw in chopped onions, chopped uh, tomatoes, I'll throw in the soup base, then eventually I'll throw in uh, a jalapeno pepper, then I'll throw in uh, some green beans, and I'll throw in some some uh, uh, slices of radish, and then some greens, you know, and that's pretty much it. Good to go. And that's what I have. Do- that's what I did. And it's amazing how fast it can be done. Because while I was waiting for the meat to pressurize and cook and all that stuff, I was doing other things like baking for my wife's bake shop and icing cookies for my wife's bake shop. Yeah. That's part of that's part of what keeps things really, really busy. Yep. Good times. And that's what's cooking. Hey folks. What's going on? I'm back. So <clears throat> now we're at a point where um Halloween has come and gone. And uh, it was a whole lot of fun. It was a whole lot of fun. The, uh, you know, it kind of kicks off with the kids celebrating Halloween at school. They do a, uh, a Halloween parade. And the way it works is there's this competition where classrooms have to collect those box tops, if you know what I'm talking about, if you're a parent. You know, these processed food snack items have these little things on the box that are called box tops. And if you collect them and you turn them into the school, somehow the school converts those box tops into earnings for that go towards the school, you know. And uh, whichever class in the school submits the most box tops, they get to lead the parade and the parade is basically all the classrooms are organized in in one big cluster of a line and they walk around the neighborhood starting from the school and uh you know a a few streets and somehow circle back into school and then from that that point on the the kids break out into their, their own classrooms and enjoy their own Halloween parties in their classroom and it's a shortened day it's like a half day in in other words and that's what happened that was a Thursday followed by Friday which was a no school day Uh, I'm not sure why but my guess is you know why would the schools want to have the kids uh, come back to school the day after Halloween when they're still sort of having a recover from all of the sugar and stuff (laughs) and i like to think too same with the teachers you know they want to be able to enjoy you know an adult night an adult halloween eve and uh and uh recover the next day call it a teacher's workshop whatever you want to call it (laughs) um but that was fun you know and uh in halloween was a uh, Friday and uh, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Wasn't it? Yeah. Or was it a Thursday? I don't know. I don't know. But as far as what went on at home, um, we had you know the house is decked out with Halloween decorations, and my wife stayed at the house to distribute candy to any of the trick or treaters, and I took the kids. Let's see, I took. I took one kid to a Halloween play date. So he went with his friends and they had a little Halloween party and got together to do trick-or-treating around their end of the neighborhood. And I took two of our, the other kids to uh, another neighbor friend's house and class slash classmate. And uh, got together with a bunch of other parents and kids and did trick-or-treating on the other end of the neighborhood. And uh, the kids did good. It was fun got to hang out with some of the adult parents or the the <laughs> the children parents would be a wrong idea but the other parents who I'm friends with and uh, got to do that and, and uh, you know my way of celebrating or enjoying the evening was uh, you know ordering uh, food 
delivered and beverage delivered. So by the time all the kids were picked up and done with for, for trick-or-treating and we were all back home, I was able to enjoy some of the, the food and beverage. And then it carried on late in the evening while I continued uh, doing things like uh, icing cookies. Last minute cookie icing for the for Halloween. Um, that was fun. So here we are. And uh, it's the 2nd of November and the spirit of Halloween is still alive. Even though I've basically tore down everything outside of the house as far as Halloween decorations. But the family went to what's called Gilroy Gardens again, since we are pass holders. And this evening, they basically did, it's, it's essentially another trick-or-treat night. They did the same theme where you can go to different parts of the park and you can get candy and you can go with your costume. But in addition, it was the, the Dia de los Muertos sort of, sort of activity or celebration. So they had a whole uh, thing going on for that. They had a, a live band, entertainment, dancing. Um, so it was sort of in the... You know, the, the movie Coco, the, the spirit of that movie, but in, in real life, in a, in a sense, here at, at the, the park. And that was fun. You know, folks on horseback and costumes and, well, not costumes, but, you know, in their uh, attire. And people with their face painted and all that good stuff. It's just nice, festive uh, spirit of the... the the, the event uh, or whatever you want to call it <laughs> not a holiday is it uh, I don't know but we just basically got back from that and uh, you know and the drive isn't too long but it's enough for me to sort of think about where I am with things and, and uh, I don't know I mean the uh, kind of dealing with a, a lot um, sort of going with the flow and there are some things that I'm doing more of and some things I'm doing less of and uh, that's pretty vague but in other words I'm in a different place and space and time and I'm not sure if I like it where I'm at or if I need to make some changes if I need to move the needle as they say um, and uh, yeah so at any rate I'm out and about again, heading to the grocery store. I need to pick up a, c a couple of things. One is uh, powdered sugar, and the other is, huh? And the other is uh, condensed milk. I'm going to my wife wants to do some additional baking. The here uh, the time zone is going to change here uh, for tomorrow, so we're going to fall back an hour. In this part of the world. So the way my wife sees it, she has a few hours to actually do some additional baking and that's what's gonna happen. So yeah, here I go. Okay, so I'm gonna see if I can wrap this up here. Um, RuPaul's Running Podcast, podcast about running hell, family play, uh, NSNG lifestyle, uh, basically everything, and uh, it's uh, um, it uh, gravitates around things in uh, my world, clearly, and um, you know things have changed. When I started the podcast, I was riding high on the fact that the NSNG lifestyle had improved my health. Mm -hmm. It had uh, made me exciting, make, made me excited about running and running sort of in a fat adapted uh, um, mode. Uh, learning, learning what it takes to to uh, fuel my body outside of running and during running. Um, you know, being a part of the community, all of that good stuff, and uh, that made me excited to be on this mic. You know, ch chatting away about about things related to that. You know, and it was very easy to slip into things related to family and how that's uh, 
that's just how does someone like me operate you know there's a lot of you out there a lot of fa- folks with families how do you operate um nsng and still have kids and try to have your kids maintain a normal sort of in other words i told my son you know what he uh, he's he's at that age where he's asking am i eating healthy and am i eating healthy and i said you know what mommy and daddy are taking care of you that's and and the last thing we want for you is to get sick so we we know better how to make sure that you're eating right and just have faith in that you know um so you're eating right and besides you know what at the same time, we're not going to put you out in the world and put you on some strict um, um, diet or teach you how to um, be a strict, let's say, an SNG, right? Um, not at this time. We do not want you guys to... to not... We don't want you to to not enjoy being a kid sort of a you know in quotes normal kid you know you need to be able to um be able to socialize and be around other kids and not be like hey did you know you know sugar's bad for you and did you know because in general the kids know that right but they don't don't i don't want my kids to become freaks around their friends and their school and stuff You know, they're kind of a little bit there, but don't want them to, like, never have a birthday cake at a birthday party or enjoy, you know, a nice scoop of ice cream or gelato on a, on a, on a, on a special, on a, on a, on a fun day, right? You know, what kind of life would you have? So, I said, at some point, you'll get old enough, you'll be able to make your own decisions if you want to be strict and SMG or keto or whatever you want, that's up to you. And if you want to just wreck your health and destroy your life and eat, you know, a bunch of garbage, that's up to you too, <laughs> right? But as far as your health, I mean, how you're eating, just, you know, believe believe me when I say, we're, you know, we're making sure that you're, you're well-fed and, and uh, you're, you're okay. Jeez Louise. I've never had to question my parents as a kid. Am I eating well? You know? Because it, that really wasn't a care, right? Am I eating well? I mean, most kids are like, can I have more soda? Can I have more candy? Can I have, you know, more junk food? You know? So, um, so anyways, what was I saying? So yeah, things are just flip-flop. You know, I'm, you know... <clears throat> However many years the podcast has been out, you know, my situation has changed. I'm not as excited about, you know, an SNG as I was when I started because it just became normal. I'm not saying it's not important. I'm not saying it's not a, it's not important to me or anything like that. It's just um, it became normal. Years and years of it, you know. You know, the first three, four years... You know, to be able to, like, lose weight during the holidays, mind-blowing. Or to be able to at least not gain any weight during the holidays, mind-blowing, right? Like I said before, at some point I felt like I was bulletproof. And then at some point I just started uh, not uh, being as good about it, you know? I, uh, I, uh... I, I think I got myself into a, a mental funk where I just didn't care because the mind is more powerful than than anything else. You know, the you know if if I'm feeling a level of depression or whatever or sadness or I don't know what it is, right? Uh, maybe I'm feeling like life is out of control and at at that time and. I, I'm at the mercy of whatever is going on and it's probably not good and I, it's out of my hands whatever it is and I want to be able to have control of something so that call that makes me feel like I have control is going to be sometimes I'm going to have that slice of bread or I'm going to have that bun or I'm going to have that slice of cake you know what? and that becomes more and more regular you know 
and then I try to get back on the train and I'm get good and everything's fine you know and then you know other things happen and uh, so I'm now now at a point where you know I uh, I could stand to be as excited about the lifestyle the way I was in the beginning but I'm clearly not in the beginning of it but I could I could stand to lose um, you know 10 12 uh, you know 15 pounds you know um, I'm not as active as I used to be but what's interesting is I, I guess my, the way I was telling myself was I have a job for a great company and I feel that at this moment in time I'm in a really great space because I'm enjoying who I'm working with what it's about and the things I'm doing there are things that I get to do and explore that make it awesome and exciting unfortunately then the other aspects of my life like I'm not running as much as I want to kind of and that kind of bums me out you know and I'm not um, I'm not great with my uh, nutrition like I like I I was that would you know and that bums me out you know and I, but I I'm, I'm enjoying things in life it's just that then there's this, these couple of things that's like like I'm like oh man you know I need to somehow turn that around so you know if it's not one thing it's the other and uh, it's a struggle right um, I want we all want to be happy, but there's always that something that, oh, God, I need to work on. And, but I'm telling you, just being happy is a big step. Being happy is what it's all about. It's just now being consistent and balanced, happy across multiple things. Not 100%, but majority, you know, balanced out and happy. Um, and then that would essentially be perfect. Anyways, that's all I got to say about that. Thanks for listening. Uh, remember, friends, to hug your friends and hug your family and eat something delicious and go run something. Bye. Thanks for listening to Ruel's Running Podcast with Ruel. If you like what you just heard, share it with your friends and your enemies. Also, be sure to check out the site over at ruelsrunning.com. This has been another Coffee with Heavy Cream production. Join us next time for another silly show of Ruel's Running Podcast. Yeah.